Here's how I grow microgreens really easy in glass jars. Now you may have saw some videos where I just put the clay pebbles and nutrients, seeds, inside of a glass jar and grew microgreens. But some people still had questions. So let's go over it a little more in detail and hopefully this will answer all your questions and you can grow your own microgreens. We'll go over the basic process and then talk a little later about things like mosquitoes and algae. All right, let's get started. First up is the container. Don't get hung up on these. Any shallow glass jar will do. The ones I got are called a cloche, and I found them in a bin at a discount store. They're only two for a dollar, so keep your eyes out. Now, I like growing microgreens in soil, but after each grow, we're always composting and having them in soil or get new soil, and I wanted something that I could use over and over again. And I remember years ago, I experimented growing my microgreens in clay pebbles. So I decided to try again because they're reusable. Now clay pebbles also go by the name of hydrogen or leca. When you first get them, they're gonna be covered with dust. You wanna rinse them really good. Now let's go ahead and put one together. Since there's no drainage on these, I'm going to be doing mine inside where I can control the light and the environment. But you could do yours outdoors if it was covered. Now the nutrients I use is the same I use for everything. Nutrients, this is my master blend of my Epsom salt, and this is my calcium nitrate. Alright. Now we'll just take this and combine them. I just put a little bit of nutrients in each container. If you're looking for an exact measurement, this ain't the channel. I just do just about like that. I also sprinkle some seeds. And no, I don't weigh them. Sorry, I'm just easy going. Sprinkle a little in each jar. And yeah, some seeds are going to fall into the water below. But as the water dries up, those will germinate too. We'll talk about the water level in a minute. For now, spritz the seeds with a little water. Cover them up. You want to make sure they stay damp during germination. Don't let them dry up. And then put them in the dark. Even if you have other lights in your grow room, keep these dark for a few days. And I don't get crazy about that either. If I need the lights on for my other microgreens, I just kind of set them on top. Blocks of light from the ones below. Microgreens on top get a little bit of light. Everybody's happy. And then after a day or two, your seeds are going to sprout. That's the exciting part. That's when you see things start. Now just leave the tops on them and let them go another few days. As the sprouts start getting bigger, and you see the roots starting to grow down into the clay pebbles, looking for that water. That's when you can take the lids off. Now, depending on the temperature and how much air you have flowing around, still keep an eye on the tiny sprouts. If they look like they're starting to dry out, spritz them with a little more water. Now, pretty much this is it. All I do is keep a little bit of water in the bottom, maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And I just do that twice a day. I use a little turkey baster. Makes it easy. Basically, that's it. Just keep a little bit of your nutrient solution in the bottom. And let the plants do their thing. So we'll talk about a few other things before you go. Some of the questions y'all have been asking. So someone asked about mosquitoes in the standing water. Now there's not very much water in here. I'm not keeping the bowl filled up. As your plants start to establish roots, it takes up more volume and there's less and less water. And the clay pebbles absorb and hold moisture. So as the water level drops, the roots are gonna hold onto those really tight and that helps the plant. And it may look like there's no water in there, but there's still water inside those clay pebbles. So as long as your plants look all right, you don't need a whole lot in the bottom. That's why I just keep about half an inch. 
Now with just that tiny bit of water in the bottom and all those roots and rock, I don't think you're going to have problems with mosquitoes. It's winter time. It's in Florida. We still have mosquitoes, but not as much. So we'll see how this does in the spring and the summer. I could be wrong. Now algae. Lots of people mistake algae for mold. Now only a few of my containers got algae. And if you're wondering about that, algae's floating around in the air. It's everywhere. So you may not get algae in all of your containers. You may not get it in any. You may get it in all. There's no way to really tell. But since our microgreens are only going to be here for a couple of weeks, the algae doesn't really make that much of a difference. And that's the funny thing is that people freak out about it. And I can show them a picture of beautiful microgreens and a little bit of algae in a container. And they'll still tell me I can't do it because I'm going to get algae. They can see the results and still say you can't do it. So a little bit of algae for this is not going to be a problem. Now one thing as far as the lights, if you just want microgreens, just any fluorescent light or strong light in your house or a sunny kitchen window will do. But if you want to grow them out a little bigger, like baby greens, then you're going to need some grow lights. So at this stage, these are microgreens. This is what everybody grows and harvests. But this is why we're putting nutrients in here. We're going to try and grow them out bigger because we want to maximize our yields. We don't care what they're called. I don't care if it's a microgreen or a baby green or a sprout or a mature plant or whatever. I just know that I want to grow some food. So when they say that a seed has enough energy to grow a microgreen, that's true. If this is all you want, I want more. So you can see how big these plants get, how we just maximize what we grew. This is more bang for your buck. For everybody out there who's saying that seeds are too expensive. And if you're buying a bunch of seeds just to grow a bunch of tiny little microgreens, that might be the case. But when you can grow this much from a couple of little packets, that's awesome. So we love the pak choy. We did arugula. Our next thing is we're going to try a bunch of different seeds and see how those go too. Now we're going to take these outside, let them get a little bit of sun, play around with the gnome village, get some pictures and video, and then we're going to harvest them. Now when we harvest, we toss the roots with the clay pebbles in a bucket, fill that up with a little water, and separate them. It's not that hard. The roots that are left on it, you can take this and set it in the sun for a couple of days and let them dry up. They'll fall right off. You can set them in a dehydrator or any warm spot where it can just dry out until the next time you want to use them. Now, I've done several grows where I'm just rinsing these out and restarting over again. There's a lot of people out there that use the clay pebbles that sterilize it. Some use hydrogen peroxide, some boil it. So just look that up if you're interested in doing that. So this is my favorite way of growing. It's easy and there's lots more to come. So you guys stick around and keep on growing.